Uh, pub, home, crime scene. A real credit to the force. Thank you, sir. How can you hear me? I'm really far away and it's raining. How can you hear that, sir? I see you're still maintaining order. Yes, sir. It's my duty to ensure no one passes through this alleyway. They must hold you in high regard down at the station. Sarcasm is the lowest form of wit, sir. You've clearly never encountered the pun. I need to use the alley. What happened here? You don't read the papers much, do you, sir? I prefer works of non-fiction. A murder, if you must know. Now, are you through bothering me? Please tell me more. I'm sorry, sir. I know very little. You can say that again? <laughs> What's your interest in this? And who are you exactly? You can go away, Steam. Thank you. I'm your boss. <laughs> I'm an investigative reporter. Is that a good thing to say? Because you're probably not going to tell me anything. I'm a private investigator and this crime scene is fundamental to my case. You can inspect all you like after the real detectives are finished, understand? Oh, burn. And what does that make you, the tea boy I reckon the sergeant would be very interested in a suspicious character snooping around the crime scene. Understand what I'm saying? One could hardly miss such an obvious threat. So he's not gonna let me snoop around? Well, I'm just gonna have a chat with the shopkeeper. Because I could see a door in the back alleyway and you sell very incredible things. It's a wicker mannequin head. It's wearing a strange contraption. Can I get that? It's ridiculous, but perhaps it could be useful. I just swiped it? <laughs> Don't you think he's gonna mind? Fenton's cream crackers. Can I get some? I'm kind of hungry. I'm not throwing my money away. Okay. Nothing useful. Nothing useful. Pickled onions and brine. Fenton's digestive biscuits. Now those are yummy, but gimme. It's some kind of jug-shaped device for the storage of liquid. How observant. A jug. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Lovely. Can I get that? I will definitely need it. I don't want one. I want one. I'm the one holding the money. Various trinkets and whatnot. I don't want any of this rubbish. I want it. Thieves will be severely wounded. Not prosecuted. Wounded. <laughs> I suppose there would be some kind of irony in stealing the sign, but I don't want it. Oh, but that would be the best thing ever. Just steal the sign that thieves will be wounded. Staff only beyond this point. Noble savage stove polish. Okay. I'm not throwing my money away. Okay, fine. Fine, fine. Carbolic unguent. Un unguent. <laughs> How do you pronounce that? I'd rather not punish my kidneys further with these toxic concoctions. Oh yeah, they were qu quite the fans of using cocaine and heroin to cure ailments at that time, weren't they? What a what a time to to be in. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm sorry. Have we met before? I don't think so, but we have. That's right. You were nosing around that alley yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Yeah, I I was chasing my dog. That old chestnut, huh? Your business is your own, Mr. Sidney Emerson. What can I do for you, Mr. Emerson? I'd like to buy this hat. You clearly have an eye for quality, Mr. Emerson. What is it exactly? It's only the latest in Parisian hair headwear. Finely crafted to keep the discerning gent's head as dry as a bone. What's the damage for such a 
fine piece of craftsmanship. Two shillings. This is best, 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 best buy. Best, best buy. How's business holding up? As good as it can be soon after the murder. Especially with that Bobby eyeing up everyone who walks by. What do you sell here exactly? All that you can see. Odds and ends and everything in between. Do you know anything about the murder two nights ago? I have... I've had no desire to. Though I couldn't help pick up a few things with the Bobby sniffing about outside. What's your interest in this business anyway? I'm, um... I'm a private investigator. I'm a private investigator. The murder is related to a case I'm working on. A private investigator? Tell me, is it as exciting as the rag sheets make out? What do they make out exactly? You know, the beautiful damsels, the exciting twists of fate, being within a hair's breadth of death. Oh yes, there's plenty of that. In fact, yesterday I was following a lead to a beautiful female. Stunning white fur coat. Piercing eyes. Well-kept paws. But alas, she left me. The bitch. <laughs> Well-kept paws? Uh, yes. The complexion of a porcelain doll. I'm afraid my life isn't quite ex as exciting as yours. I'd be happy to help you with anything. Where was the body taken? I overheard the Blue Bottles talking about taking her to St. Pancras Mortuary. St. Pancras, thank you. Did you know the victim? I've n never met her before. All I know is what I've read in the papers today. And what was that? I'm sure you've read them too, it's plastered on all the front pages. Her name was Alice Fairchild, a street girl from Bermondsey. I can see where this is going. That's all about I know on that matter. Enough questions for now. You've been very helpful. Take it easy. I'll try. You're a good man. I hope you're not the murderer, but you don't seem to be. Now I've got my fancy rain hat. I should probably use it. It's an umbrella attached to a hat. Do you want it? How would a rain shield help here? Well, it could help me. Not with the alley, but with me. What do you want? I still need to use the alley. And why is that, sir? I'm looking for- I'm still looking for my dog. I'm looking for my dog. He ran up here. I can report that a dog was seen in the alley yesterday. It has since vacated the area. I need to track him. I need to find clues to track him. And what exactly are you hoping to find in the alley? A stool sample? A partial- <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> mustache. <laughs> mustache. Is that a pun for mustache? <laughs> Fur fibers. A stool sample. Hilarious. We've got a few new locations though. Mortuary. You know, I bought this piece of crap. You might as well fucking wear it. It's a sturdy wooden door. Indeed it is. Unless you are deceased, I doubt you have any credible reason to knock on this door. And it's a pleasure to meet you too. What is it? What do you want? I require access to the mortuary? Official business, you see. And why on earth would I grant you that? I know the kind of official business which concerns your breed. What is it these days? A quid a cadaver? 
No, it's not like that at all. Then whose official business are you on? The police, Department of Sanitation, the Lord. <laughs> the Lords. The police. I'm with the Met Metropolitan Police. I urgently need to retrieve the deceased's belongings. I've already told you, dunderheads. You can get your grubby bits on her possessions tomorrow. Now, I'll be back to my craft, if that is everything. Can you come outside? Can you at least come outside so we can talk face to face? Well, we kind of are already, but... Usually I'd, ad I'd oblige as much, even for a specimen such as yourself. But I refuse to leave whilst that torrent falls from the sky. It's just a bit of rain. You may be indifferent to smelling like a damp hound. But I detest the rain. It dulls the senses and weakens the constitution. Why don't you use an umbrella? I have an umbrella that I could put on your face. Why don't you just use an umbrella? These are the hands of an artist. They must be free to wield the scalpel, the pen, and the bone saw. Not clasp some grotesque wooden shaft. That's what she said. I'd really like to come inside. That's what he said. I prefer if you did not. Are you sure you won't come out? Not while I'm exposed to that torrent. Well, I have the perfect thing. I'll be going now. So long. You'll make a fine cadaver someday, boy. Well, that was grim. But I have the perfect item to give you that leaves your hands free. And shields you from the horrible rain that I love. Why do you hound me? I found the perfect contraption for you. I highly doubt it. It's an umbrella which has been ingeniously attached to a hat. Now you can walk unmolested by the rain and keep those precious hands of yours free. That sounds simply astounding. Would you attach this wondrous contraption for me? But of course. I've never felt so free in my life. Now to test this beauty on the streets. Well, you seem to be a bit stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> oh no. Take this infernal contraption off, would you? Sorry, but I'm late for an appointment. Take this infernal contraption off! Oh, look at him. This, this, he's so cute. <laughs> he'll be all. He'll be all right. I'm sure of it. Maybe. I can feel my brain swelling. So I got him stuck. Can I go this way? Oh, so adorable. I can see the autopsy room through the heavy iron ba ba bars. It's empty. All manner of medical and general waste. Lovely. I'm not touching that for all the tea in China. And that's a lot of tea. The grate is hanging on by two screws, but I can't unscrew it with my hands. Oh boy, am I ever ready for everything. It's no good. I can feel the screwdriver splintering under the strain. Perhaps I can find some means to strengthen it. Huh, I guess I'm not ready for everything. <laughs> soap? Um, why do I have the soap with me though? Huh. So I need something to strengthen- oops. <laughs> Don't click away from the game. Huh, I need to strengthen it. Maybe in the rub rubbish. Cover- cover it in rubbish. I don't want to unscrew that. Mmm, I guess it's time to go back to the store and buy some more crap. Aw, he's so cute. <laughs> you know what he reminds me of? Those videos of dogs that want to, like, bring in 
inside a bigger stick than the door allows and they keep trying but they don't understand that they just have to twist it and they keep trying and they get upset and they can't bring the stick in. Mr. Shopkeeper, I need more stuff. Do you have like, I don't know, something that turns wood into metal? Help. I don't want to unscrew it. Well, I... Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Hello. How can I help you? Um... None of these. All that you can see. Baked beans. Whale oil. Do I need that? I don't need it. Petroleum jelly. Well, I might need that for later. Fester's carbonated coca wine. Soar like a kite. Do you have any festers in stock? Sorry, we're all out. The kids can't get enough of it. Does it have cocaine in it? A jar of horrible boiled sweets. Nobody likes them. I prefer my teeth unsullied, thanks. No problem. Wadded beef. What does that mean? What does all of this mean? Table fruit. Foot gelatin. Strawberry jam. Teacups. Wadded beef again. Paraffin oil. Table fruit again. Digestive biscuits. Breakfast flakes. Porridge oats. More biscuits and chutney and everything and the biscuits are everywhere and everybody likes breakfast. Way ho. I can't believe it's not ox tongue. Did it say carbonated dipping jam? The creators were having a lot of fun creating <laughs> names of foods of Victorian times. It's uh, interesting. I prefer to work by gaslight. I don't want one. Oh, what can I get to strengthen this? Or actually get a screwdriver? Carter's blended tobacco candy bar. <laughs> oh my god. Anything I can do at home since they gave me this beautiful screen. Mr. Simmons's old cart. Hey, a clamp. A clamp is keeping the wheel on. Can I take it? Not there. I did it. What did that do? I have a clamp now. A sturdy clamp. Perfect for clamping. Can I use it? Nope, that's not it. Damn it. Use cart. I can't take the whole cart with me. Why not? Mr. Simmons. I'm not knocking after last time. Pitchform pitchfork me once, shame on you. Pitchfork me twice, shame on me. It's very true. Okay, so we got a clamp, that's progress. I still have to find a way to strengthen a wooden a wooden screwdriver instead of, you know, buying one, like a real one, because I have the money. But whatever. Okay. Oh, oops. <laughs> Whoops. Let's hope no one witnessed that. Yeah. He's probably gonna kill me. Okay, so we need more stuff. Let's go to the pub. The ye old pub. Varnish. Ooh, that must be it. There's a little varnish. Do it. Let's give this a dip. That should strengthen it a bit. Instead of buying a real one, but whatever. Take this infernal contraption off! Nope. Why didn't I just use the door? One of the bars came off in my hand. Plus, my little cocktail screwdriver is shredded to bits. So long, friend. You served me well. You sure did. And now I have an iron bar, which is an excellent weapon. Hmm. This is awfully cheery music for uh, a mortuary, but whatever. That must be her. I think so. 
a tag for determining the identity of the deceased. Alice Fairchild. So it's the right person, but I will inspect her in a minute. In a minute. Various medical publications. A fine pine bureau. I can't imagine the autopsy results are filed away yet. Probably not. Ooh. It seems he fancies himself as something of an artist. That's nice. That's really nice. I can't tell whether they're for work or pleasure. Well, it's a nice combination of uh, both interests. It looks like a cigar box. One is taken. Well, it's also lit. I don't think you'll miss one cigar. I already have one. And I'm decent enough to not take both. Or all. It's still hot. No time for tea. I'd rather not, not stain these fine trousers. I don't know where his mouth has been. Many places. The cigar smoke does well to mask the smell of death. How grim. It's the record book. Fairchild. Alice. Possession silver pendant. I need that. Currency to the value of six shillings and two pence. The arms were placed behind the head as if lounging. The legs were drawn up, the feet resting on the ground, and the knees turned outwards. The face was turned to the left side. The throat had been severed from ear to ear, down, down to the vert vertebrae, and the larynx removed with some precision. The shoes were removed, presumably after death, due to the pristine condition of the feet. There were no other injuries to the body, except for bruising on the wrist and jaw, possibly inflicted by the pressure of the fingers. It's gruesome. Alice's possessions are in box 11. Box 11. Gimme, 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 gimme. Box 11 in Roman numerals. Anatomical illustration. Can I get that? I would love to have that in my house. What else can I pick up, since I'm here? It's filled with medical fluids. Well, I probably should get some morphine and start getting hooked up on it. They did an immense amount of drugs in those days. They did morphine and heroin and cocaine were like prescribed as aspirins and stuff. It was truly an amazing time to be alive. Alice's possessions will be enough theft. You can do this. You know this isn't necessary. You're only delaying the inevitable. I'll thank her later. Alice. It's a wonderful name. Her throat has been torn quite ferociously. Such a striking resemblance to her sister. Despite the circumstances of her life and death, I can't see a shred of hatred in her face. I think I've seen all that I'm going to. Oh? We were having such a nice moment, and now she's dead. Box 11. Okay, so do I have to click on the 11 one? <clears throat> the locket and a cigarette case. Uh, I guess uh, mission accomplished. Oh, Alice. The woman who saved my life. A silver pendant is silver pendant is inlaid with an impressive garnet. It is impressive. I'll examine it once I've returned home. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, Alice. Oh god, not again. I need a bath. I'll give Polly the locket tomorrow. She said she's staying in her sister's flat. 
I don't think there's any need for me to read the address she wrote down. She can't know I've been there before. She mustn't know I've met Alice. I see no positive reaction to sharing that fact. It's pointless. Coincidental. I'll give Polly the locket tomorrow. Get the rest of my pay. A well-earned fifty pounds. Maybe I'll treat myself to a new overcoat. A tweed one. With a leather lapel. Silk lining. Tortoise shell buttons. I'm sorry, what were you saying? I would swim this stretch of river as a child. With your sister? Hardly. She would sit on the riverbank, wrapped up in some droll romance. Who did she read? She wasn't reading anything, except perhaps the lips of her latest potential husband. She was always searching for a suitor. Teeming with wildlife this time of year. I think I spotted a stoat. An attempt to divert the conversation away from the topic of marriage, I see. There's only enough room for one investigator in this boat. I would kick my legs up and splash Polly, pretending it was an accident. She would be fuming. Never underestimate the wickedness of youth. There's a skull in the water. So you've told me before, you old curmudgeon. About that night... Sydney, are you sure we're headed in the right direction? I'm... I'm sure this was the route last time. You know best. I see you're wearing the pendant. This whole thing? Eh, it's nothing special. Tell me, why were you not wearing it when we met? It was a gift from my mother. It would seem a vile thing to wear it while working. I always kept it close to me, though. What do you mean, kept? Alice? Sydney, I feel odd. What are you doing, Sydney? I'm not doing anything. No! Sydney, help me! Alice! Gah. Poor dude. He really liked her. And now she's gone. I'm afraid I have only one seat. You can perch on the chest or sit on the bed if, if that's not too vul vulgar a suggestion. Don't worry, I'll stand. Do you have any news? You truly are a fine detective, Mr. Emerson. I cannot say I expected a result so soon. I'll retrieve your money. Fifty pounds, Mr. Emerson. Thank you, Mrs. Marwood. Your services have proved helpful beyond expectation. Thank you. Yes? Do you have any desire to know what happened to your sister? 
I know what happened, Sydney. My sister was killed by an unknown assailant while working in a dangerous occupation. But wouldn't you like to know why? What difference would it make? I'm sure knowledge the criminal is prevented from harming others would provide some solace. Perhaps. Or some justification for Alice's pointless death. And you could provide this? I would try the best of my ability. The police are already trying their best to find the killer, this so-called Ripper. The combined force of Metropolitan Police can find their... their cocks with both hands. That's more or less the sentiment I was going for, crudeness aside. That was a beautiful way to put it. I'm sorry, I picked it up from a cab driver. Then you must remember to drop it before you return home. I'm sure your husband would be most dissatisfied. Perhaps I should stop keeping such poor company. <laughs> that would be a commendable achievement in this city. One hundred pounds, Mr. Emerson. To be paid on your discovery of the murderer's identity and motive. A hundred pounds. I wish I could refuse the money. Am I a crook? I shan't be paying in advance this time. That sounds agreeable. I'll be in London for the coming month. Staying at this address and seeing to my sister's matters, as well as my own. Then I shall see you soon. Sydney. Alice's funeral is tomorrow. I would be grateful if you could find the time to attend. I would be honored. 1 p.m. at Kensal Green Cemetery. Alrighty, so we have a funeral to look forward to. Oh, oh, if we go home, our neighbor is gonna kill us. And probably, and probably our peeping landlord as well. Ugh.